man, I just had to go out today. I just had to go out, all right? I work at a school. They let it out at 1 o'clock because some snow was coming. It started snowing. I worked about it, you know, finished my shift off. And I was like, well, you know what? If I get snowed in, I might want to go out and, you know, hang out with some people and stuff. Because the last couple of weeks, you know, it's got real cold and stuff and got a little cabin fever. So I go on after the comic book shop and, you know, I don't buy new, you know, comics most of the time anyway. And this past Saturday, they just had a 50 cent sale on all the back issues. Made a video, got some stuff. So I walk in there and uh, it's just two, three people talking in the back. And long story short, the owner's birthday was today. So he had a quarter comic back issue sale. So I, <laughs> I'm like, you son of a bitch. So uh, it lovingly, lovingly, you know. So then it's like I'm sitting there and I'm about, you know, 30 seconds into the first box and another guy walks in. He looks at me and goes, you know, I knew you couldn't pass up a quarter box, a quarter, a quarter sale, you know. Uh, uh, well, nobody was surprised. So I ended up getting some books. Here they are. Let me get through them, you know. <laughs> so one of the free things I got while I was there before I get to the comics was is I got the promotional poster for Neil Gaiman's Sandman Overture. All right, and uh, that's a J.H. Williams painting there for uh, uh, the same man Overture number one. It came out back in October. Yes, second issue is already late. And what is wild is that when you blow this thing up, you start noticing little things, right? Like, you know, I looked at the cover in that green bee right there in the center, that alien Cthulhu-looking uh, insect. I didn't, it didn't really register. I think I thought it was just a piece of floating pollen or leaf or something. And then you get down here and you start noticing that the plants have eyes. I noticed the teeth, but some of them have eyeballs. And that thing's you know, too gawky to kind of get there. So it was really cool. And you know what? That kind of shows my age and stuff from what, what I can tell because, like, and this isn't a bad thing. This is just an observation, right? Um, posters used to be the stuff to have. I mean, they had whole magazines of heavy metal bands. And I remember some... Uh, comic book poster books and stuff like that and you hung those suckers up i had a whole like gigantic uh cross looking thing of uh it was actually a work of art it took up the whole wall of my room of guns and roses and I actually had some banner stuff and pins and stuff of guns and roses just just there and also had like a metallica poster you know back in the day that's all you could find really and that thing had set in the shop and nobody had been grabbing the the, the posters you know and i'm starting to think i'd the kids I work with and stuff, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe from having a, uh, maybe it comes from doing this all the time, instead of, you know, kind of looking around and stuff, I don't know, I don't know. Now into the comics, you know, that's enough of that. Now the comics, here's the stuff I got for a quarter a piece. Basically, I might have miscounted, man, this is a $10 thing, that's it, I cut myself off at 10 bucks. I've spent way too much money. Um, right out of the bag. No idea. I think I put these in order as I was going through to make sure I didn't get doubles. Um, got a ton of Valiant books, man. Uh, and I, I left these, during the 50 cents sale, I left all these behind. You know, and I, I think I got a bunch of Shadow Man. So now we have Archer and Armstrong, number 10. I've been hearing great things about Archer and Armstrong. Number 11, and it's a Brady Bunch cover. But what cracks me up is I saw one of the X books had the same kind of cover. All right. Number 14, uh, Archer and Armstrong again. Now, I was a huge fan of the original Valiant stuff. I've got, I'm probably missing only two or three books from all, from the Jim Shooter era there when it was the best that it ever was. Yeah, I don't know what they're fighting. It's like a bunch of, I can't tell if it's robots or soldiers or something. Harbinger number zero. And actually, Harbinger was a good book back in the day, but, you know, it didn't really grab me. So, uh, I've been hearing great things about this. Number three. Number five, looks like Harad is back. I'm not going to say anything because I haven't read these. Looks like he's messing somebody up. Okay, number eight. Very cool, very cool. Oh, big bad. I wonder if these are link up. I don't know, I don't know. Number nine. Oh, they, these have got to link up. Well, they reminisce of each other. Number ten. I'm doing a horrible job. They're not in bags and boards, so they're a little bit gawky. Number 13, I like that cover, man. Have everybody uh, reflected in the bullets. And uh, that's the barrel of a gun. Number 14, looks like Bloodshot pops up. I left the Bloodshot behind. There's a ton of Bloodshot there. 
and uh, Harbinger Ward number one was there. Um, Harbinger number 15, that looks real reminiscent of the original team in a way. Uh, if that is Torque, he ended up being the dad of Magnus in the original uh, Magnus Robot Hunter. So, uh, 17. And look at this, man. There's a monkey on the cover. Yeah, look at that. Monkey, monkey, monkey. Alright. And then we got Quantum and Woody number two. I've never read any of these. Back in the day, I think Mark Bright was the artist. Uh, Christopher Priest was the writer, maybe. And I heard this was a hilarious book. Uh, I think the whole deal is they have to touch each other once every 24 hours that they die. Something like that. It ended up being a comedy team. Uh, it sounded very Abbott Costello to me. Or maybe more, yeah, yeah. Uh, 16 of Exo Man of War with Eternal Warrior. That's kind of cool for me. Uh, some kind of sketch cover of number two. I have number one in the back. One of them signed or graded or something. Uh, Carrie Nord's doing the art. Don't know what this is. I don't know if it's a variant or what. I'll look it up later. But uh, it's really nice. Okay, number six. Looks like they put in Ninjak. Yes, I'm throwing comics all over the place. All right, here we go. Looks like they put in Ninjak. Brought him back. One of Joe Casada's uh, little things he did in the 90. Number 9, Prelude to Planet Death. I love that. That sounds like an old 50s sci-fi movie. Planet X and Planet Death. Number 11, looks like we're there. Planet Death starts here. So that should be cool. And number 14, Planet Death continues. So that should be cool. If those are good, I should be able to track the books down. Um, I'm going to piece this together. I'm not really... You know, too big and real worried about it. But if I see them, I'll grab them. Um, ended up grabbing some uh, of the. I, I read one issue um, of Daredevil. It's in another video. Uh, I think it's like issue 31 or something. It's got all the. Uh, it's got Wolfman, Frankenstein, all the Marvel mummy, all the Marvel monsters on it. Anyway, going back here a little bit. Here's number 15. It's Mark Wade's um, Daredevil. And he did a lot like what I think he did on the Flash back in the day when he started. You know, really. Uh, popping as a writer and stuff kind of gave it that silver age non-gritty feel uh, from what I can tell number 16 um, I don't know if I so much feel like I've been missing out on this book and number 28 this one's got a little looks like this one took a little bump but you know it was a quarter but um yeah what I read I really liked man it just flowed it just flowed as a book the pacing was great I was like yeah okay these two books here Legends of the Dark Knight. I'm not going to say too much because I didn't really look this up and I'm not, you know, when it comes to the newer stuff in like the last year or two, I'm really kind of lacking. But this is Legends of the Dark Knight, uh, number six and seven. And the reason I got it is it's got uh, uh, Omen on it. Uh, that's the guy that does Powers and I think he wrote a story in these. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this may be the book where we get, we get some... Uh, kind of out of continuity Batman stories that were online and then they went ahead and started publishing in the book okay and it's a you know this one's got a uh, Omin doing on two stories here and uh, I looked through there the art was really good man there's some other stuff going on here but here's just a case man very kind of Jeff Darrow like I'm getting one if this is the guy that did that mini series or that maxi series the 12 a few years ago but a uh, really nice detailed art um Juan Jose Rip. They got it like, uh, can't read the title, man. They got it like in some kind of like computer letters. Okay. Uh, and then I got this one, Harris, Joe Harris. So I think that's very cool. But uh, this is like uh, number seven. And these are $4 books. That's another thing. I grabbed these and then these are $4 books I got for a quarter. But uh, it starts out with Arkham Asylum. I mean, just look at this artwork. I mean, this is fantastic. So, I can't wait to read those. Um, and I keep doing it, man. I keep... I'm wanting I'm wanting to buy some mainstream books. You know, get my heroes and stuff so bad that I keep taking a chance. And then I end up selling them on eBay. Uh, so, hopefully, maybe this won't uh, let me down. But, here's that. This is for a quarter. Animal Man number 25. Um, I know this is ending. Uh, number 3. Number 11. Now I left some Swamp Thing behind, man. 22. Uh, 
and I saw this and I was like Brother Blood is back so I'll be interested to see what they've done to Brother Blood in the DC 52 number 23 there uh, number 24 and then annual number 2 okay four ninety a five dollar book for a quarter uh, what are these yeah it's still two ninety nine. I got these I think these are really good books um, you know but uh, Batman Beyond number 16 I'm really hoping this isn't a double but uh, I love that man they had the metal man here and uh, this was uh, what Alex Ross and Mark Way did to the metal man way back in Kingdom Come they had a merge uh, you know like those 80s robots and stuff you know all kinds of I mean, like Voltron and Orbots and all that stuff where everybody would form a, a part of the body so he just kind of had the middlemen all to come together as one uh, creature so you know I, I had to grab that and I've got this ordered I've been ordering books online I get 15% off and I don't see why because half over half of what I've ordered I've seen for 50 cents a dollar and a quarter in here and stuff and here's the Star Wars number three I got the la I got number two for 50 cents I got um, number one for a buck, and then uh, I get this one for a quarter, uh, Desert Ambush. This is where they take the original script by George Lucas and adapt it into an eight-issue miniseries. And I've got I've got these ordered online, but I'm not passing them up, you know, for this, you know. I don't know. For a quarter, I'm not passing it up, man. But uh looks like it's finally picking up, you know. So I've read issue one. I'm wanting to get a whole bunch so I can read it because it seems like it was really slow paced. I got this because this was an eight dollar book and it's Scott Snyder and it's vampires. But uh, here's a six ninety at uh, six dollars and ninety nine cent um, one shot. It's an American Vampire special, The Long Road to Hell by Scott Snyder. So you know if it's a one shot and it's a complete story and Scott Snyder writes some creepy stuff, you know I'll check it out, especially for a quarter. All right now. These books, we had Villains Month, and it was all 3D covers and stuff, right? I have yet to pay full price for any of those books, and I'm starting to get quite a collection, plus I'm getting doubles, you know. But this one right here, I got this for a quarter. This is, uh, looks like it's Batman and Robin, 23.4, $3.99 book, 3D cover of Killer Croc for a quarter. Alright, I'll just put that to the side, and I'll put them with the rest of them. Okay. I picked this up because, like, it has Batman villains in it, right? Um, and I put quite a few back, and maybe they'll be there and stuff. But I don't know where he's at. I don't know if he's in Arkham or something. But uh, I opened up a page, and I saw a whole bunch of uh, Batman villains here somewhere. Anyway. Yeah, here we go. It might just be a flashback. But I got Swamp Thing number 16 for a quarter with Man Bat on the cover. If that is Man Bat. It looks like it says something about Rot World, The Green Kingdom Part 4. So I may be reading this all wrong, but maybe it's the uh, Batman villains who sort of have a tie to nature. Anyway, there's Mr. Freeze, and there's Croc, and there's the Floronic Man. Um, you know, Scott Snyder also writes this, and he writes Batman, so, you know, who better to do it? And then I got this, since it was a quarter, I got this completely because it's a uh, homage to uh, uh, a Watchmen cover. Uh, Skull Kickers, number 24, $3.50 book for a quarter uh, no idea what this is about but they had uh, several covers where they were uh, an homage to older books uh, so you know the great green arrow green lantern book where uh, speedy is caught taking heroin and the, what about your sidekick he's a junkie you know all this stuff it's, there you go I got that completely because you know add to the watchman collection and then I got these because there was a bunch of them and I figure why not because it's a $3.99 book I've heard great things I think Jimmy Palamati uh, Jimmy Palamati um, might have been he might him and Justin Gray might this I think they're coming up close to 10 years of working on this if that sounds right 10 years of working on Jonah Hex here man but this is the DC 52 stuff um, uh, Jonah Hex uh, one of those like I said 3.99 books I uh, got all these four quarters, number three. Okay, hope you can see them. Number eight. Um, you know, and if I don't like them, I'll just put them on eBay, sell them cheap, you know. Um, number ten. Uh, I don't know if they're showing up. Looks like some guy's getting thrown out of the window during a poker game. you never seen that in a western. Yep, number twelve. Uh, Wayne Casino. Apparently, this takes place in uh, Gotham City of the Wild West. 
Okay. Clowns. Oh no. Horror at Healy's uh, Circus. Man. Okay. Number 14. More fighting, more brawling. Number 16. Some Walt Simonson covers. I wonder if Batlash ever popped up in this. Okay, then we jump up to 17. The Plague Upon Gotham. Right through to Jonah Hicks and all of it. Ooh, that looks evil. Oh no, at the mercy of Savage. That must be Vandal Savage here in issue 18 during the Wild West. Vandal Savage is more or less an immortal caveman who had ties to Immortal Man and a whole other thing. It looks like he jumped up into modern times because there's a battle with a Batwing, issue 21. I know Booster Gold popped up and apparently I was spared all that. Number 22, Raw Star Westerns featuring Jonah Hicks, 23, and... 24. So that's my quarter haul that I didn't know I was going to get today, and I've got problems. So thanks for sticking in there. Hopefully, uh, you know, you saw some good stuff in there, and I don't know. If I don't like some of the stuff, I'll stick it on eBay. All right, later, guys.